Ron said, my name is Lisa Kapanikri, and I'm the author of Whatever Happened to Sunday Dinner. Uh, I'm going to talk to you this evening a little bit about the art of building an Italian menu. Believe it or not, the art of building a menu is really a lost art. We're so focused on one dish and quick fixes in our uh, world today because we're all so busy. But Sunday is a day that should be reserved for family in our Italian tradition. It's a very important part of our lives. And so the inspiration for my cookbook was actually my children who I raised on Sunday dinner and thankfully because my Sicilian grandmother raised me on Sunday dinner. So as my cookbook describes, I have 52 Italian menus one for each Sunday of the year. And each menu has five courses, from antipasto to dolce. Now, I see a woman making a face in the back, kind of grimacing, but the kicker is, not one recipe takes longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Why is that? Because just because we have five courses for a Sunday menu, does not mean that you need to be slaving in the kitchen from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. when you go to the table. Quite the opposite. The history of Italian cuisine is fresh, regional products. So we capitalize on whatever items, produce, meat, are plentiful in that season. And in fact, in my cookbook, I emphasize the regionality and the seasonality of the recipes. So in other words, you know, you have zucchini uh, that is very plentiful at certain times of year, and we incorporate that into our menu to make it a seasonal menu. But the reason my recipes are so short, only 20 minutes, is because we use fresh, healthy Italian food, and those are really the hallmarks of Italian food. Very little preparation, very few heavy sauces, just healthy, delicious food. So how do you go about building a menu if you want to uh, tackle this art of menu building? Well, the most important thing is, for example, in Italian menus, we always start with an antipasto. So how many people here love antipasti? How can you not? What's the history of an antipasto? Well, what does antipasto mean? Does anybody know what antipasto means? What does it mean? No, actually it has nothing to do with pasta. I'm so glad you said that. Everyone thinks antipasto means something to do with pasta. Well, one is pasto and one is pasta. And a pasto in Italian means meal. That's right. So what does, what does anti mean? Before, exactly. So antipasto is before your meal. Now, here's a typical menu, my first menu. We start with our antipasto, which is Sicilian rolled peppers. Yum, oh, from my grandmother. And um, why do we start every menu in Italy with an antipasto? Because we believe that before you dive into that pasta or risotto or minestra, which is your primo that I'll get to next, you should have something sort of to break the ice, to welcome your, the food to your stomach, to warm your stomach to the food. So we have an antipasto before the meal, and it's just a small, light, um, very, very heavy on the vegetable side, like the Sicilian rolled peppers. Maybe we'll have a crostino, which is a small bruschetta on small bread with a lovely vegetable pate or olive pate. Or maybe we'll have a tray as we do here in the United States. And I have to say, our antipasto tray here with the salami and the formaggi, the cheeses, that's, no, that's typical, this lady knows what she's talking about. That's typical Italian-American. That is not found so much in Italy. But it's wonderful nonetheless, I adore it. Or maybe we'll have just, you know, a nice uh, plate of marinated uh, artichokes or vegetables. So it's something light and healthy and delicious to uh, begin your meal with before we delve into the pasta. So this is part of the art of building a menu. You know, if you welcome your family to the Sunday dinner table, you start graciously, slowly by something um, to begin your meal. So that's the history of antipasto. And what do we do next in Italy? Well, we have a primo, 
And of course, everybody in America is very familiar with primos because a primo is, of course, a pasta. You know, it's our pasta or risotto or minestra. So we have three items that make up a primo. A pasta is that you're all familiar with any type of pasta, baked pasta, fresh pasta, it doesn't matter. A risotto, which is of course our long cooked rice, arborio rice, or a minestra. And a minestra can be any type of soup. Now, a lot of people don't realize that Italians are huge consumers of soup, especially in northern Italy. Because legumes are very plentiful and soup is so good for you. We put a lot of pastina in our soups. Then I have in my cookbook, oh, probably at least 10 or 12 wonderful minestre that I learned went all over Italy. Although I'm half Sicilian and half Neapolitan, I've lived the majority of my life, or about half my life, all over Italy. Milano, Florence, Rome, everywhere. So I, my cookbook was called, um, by one of my customers, a regional tour, a regional culinary tour of Italy. I love that. Isn't that a great thing? So in the history of the menu, in the beginning of each menu, I describe for you the regionality of the dishes. Where does this come from? Is this a Bolognese menu, a Florentine menu, a Roman menu? So you know what you're eating. That's another thing. We Italians love to know what we're eating and why we're eating it. So <clears throat> then we move on to our secondo. And what is our secondo? Well, that's a meat, fish, or a fowl. Now, contrary to what a lot of people think, you know, you're probably thinking already, wow, we're already on the third dish. This is a lot of food. Quite the contrary. We eat less in five courses in a typical Italian meal than you do when you go to any restaurant and you order one dish which comes on a platter size enough to feed a family of four, right? So our, our dishes are smart. Our antipasto is small. Our pasta is usually no bigger than maybe the size of your hand. And now we get to our secondo, meat, fish, or fowl. And it's usually a small cutlet, a small piece of fish, accompanied with our contorno. And the contorno is either a vegetable or a salad, something green, something... Um, and why do we eat that after our secondo? Well, because... Anybody know? Very good, exactly. Another thing that... This just stupefies me when I go to restaurants in the United States and they serve you your salad first. What is the point of eating your salad first? A salad, historically, is a digestive. So the point is, for it to sort of, without getting too graphic, or to wash down the rest of our dinner, right? Um, and help our natural process. So we have our digestivo, which is our contorno. So naturally, we eat it after our antipasto, primo, secondo, and then our contorno. And then, of course, we finish off our wonderful five-course, lovely Italian dinner. Remember that one of these courses or recipes has taken longer than 20 minutes to prepare. And then we finish with a dolce, which literally means sweet. Now, those of you who know a lot about Italian food know we don't have heavy, rich dessert. Probably the, the richest dessert I can think of in Italy that's in my cookbook, of course, is tiramisu. And why is that so rich? Well, because it uses mascarpone cheese. And by no stretch of the imagination is mascarpone a light cheese, no matter how you cut it. But again, we mix it with egg white to make it fluffier and lighter, and we use a small amount. So our quantities remain small. And again, in our dolce, with our desserts, we eat small amounts of dessert. We don't have huge pieces of cake. We eat a little bit of, bit of, a, of gelato, a little bit of a semifreddo, a little bit of a torte. Uh, torts are very big all over Italy. Fruit torts, cheese torts. So I have a lot of torts in um, my cookbook. Granita. Granita. I have about four different flavors of granita in here. Bad. I have strawberry spumoni, which is not the spumoni we know in the United States, which of course, as you know, doesn't even exist in Italy. Strawberry spumoni is a whipped uh, dessert with fresh strawberries, lemon juice, and cream. Yeah, and you whip it and it comes, oh, melts in your mouth. It's like a semifreddo, that half frozen, as they call that. So, now we've gone through the five courses from antipasto to dolce, so we know what a typical Italian menu is. And, but why do we build menus like that in Italy? Why do we think it's important to eat our five courses? 
Well, naturally, the first thing that jumps out at you is, from what I've described of the five courses, is you have a what? A balanced meal, right? So you've now eaten, exactly, you've got your pyramid, and you've eaten your legumes, you've had some starch, you've had your protein, you have your roughage, and then you have what all of us need, a little bit of sweet at the end, right? So the art of building a, a wonderful Italian menu consists firstly and most importantly in knowing what dishes go together. Some very important things that I point out in my book, for example, in Italy, we would never begin with a pasta in a tomato sauce, followed by, let's say, a chicken in a cream sauce. We have in Italy what we call menu rosso, a red menu, which is a tomato base, and then we have menu bianco, which is white base, might be a white sauce <clears throat> with a risotto, and maybe then followed by a chicken or a veal in a cream sauce. We have also theme menus, which are very, very common in Italy. For example, in the fall, mushrooms are plentiful. So we do menus based on the porcino mushroom. We might have a tagliatelle with porcini mushrooms, which I have in here, followed by a nice piece of bistecca fiorentina and mushrooms tripolati, or sautéed mushrooms, because it's fall and that's our theme, because it's a plentiful vegetable. So, the art of building Italian menus is, is multifold. The first is to know that you want a balanced, healthy menu from all your food. You. Secondly, you want to divide these items or products in sensible sizes and courses so that we enjoy each one. And then thirdly, you want all the dishes to go together so that you're feeling very well after the dinner you've enjoyed it all, but also so that the dishes complement each other, which is very important, all of which I explain um, in my book. My book is really called A Niche Italian Cookbook, and it is, because it focuses on 52 Sundays, 52 menus, five courses each, you never repeat a recipe, so you have 260 recipes. The variety in Italian food is so plentiful, I can't even begin to describe it. My book with 260 recipes doesn't scratch the surface. I tell people all the time, I could write three more books for three more years of, of Sunday menus, and I wouldn't use all the recipes that I have, because Italians are very imaginative cooks. But I think the best part of our Sunday dinner is the pleasure you get of sitting at the Sunday dinner table, apart from cook exactly, the time, spending two, three hours, and you know statistics show that the longer you sit at table does not equate to eating more. Why? Because you engage in conversation, you enjoy each other's company, you talk about interesting things, so you rest between each course, so you actually eat less sitting at a table like that than you do running to a restaurant and exactly seeing how much you can swallow. So the beauty of the Sunday dinner table and the Italian menu is enjoying each course and the simplicity and the delicious flavor and the fresh ingredients of each course, which then turns into this beautiful five course menu. So it's really the art of menu building which is very prevalent in Italy, a little less prevalent in our country, is something that I'm bringing back in my cookbook and something that I think families in the United States really want to get back to. We, my book has hit a, a chord in the United States because we really want to spend Sunday with our families. We really want to cook together. We want to eat together. And we can do it in a delicious, healthy manner by enjoying different courses. In this way, you also teach your family, you teach your children about the different food groups, you teach them about the art of dining, not eating, dining. There's a huge difference, enjoying each other's company at the table, eating slowly. So, um, the book sort of tackles all of those areas, and um, it is very unique in its approach of uh, building these Sunday menus, which are all laid out for you. But I think the, the most important thing to remember in building your menus is just to have a representative uh, group of all foods and make complementary dishes that go together so that you enjoy the full dining experience.
And remember, spend Sundays with your family. That's what the day was intended for.